I like to start with choking on a baby because it seems every, it is the most common thing people tell me they use from CPR. That instead of using CPR defibrillating, that people end up family gatherings, birthday parties, just stuff that children, particularly babies, choke on stuff. They put things in their mouth. So if baby's in her high chair and I very foolishly give her a raw carrot, which of course I should not do, and she's choking, I'm gonna do more than just patting her on the back. I'm gonna pick her up and I'm gonna sit down, and hopefully you guys can see me, and instead of just patting her, I'm going to support her with my hand at her chin and my arm supporting her torso, sorry, and then I'm gonna tip her down on my leg. So my thigh is supporting my arm. Let gravity help me, and I'm gonna use my hand and give her five back slaps, okay, to try and get that out. If she doesn't come out, now I'm turning over to my other arm, still supporting her head and neck with my arm in my hand, and my arm is supported on my thigh. I'm gonna use two fingers, okay? And I'm basically going to her stomach area and pushing on it five times. So kind of like doing a Heimlich, which is a fist in your stomach, but just two fingers, okay? That's all we need on the baby. So five of those, if she spits it out facing this way, I'm just gonna take it out. If she doesn't, we're going right back over so that I can hit her back again with my hand, okay? So that's choking baby, which is a little different. So I like to show that. This sounds kind of funny, but the mm -hmm. baby. 12 months and under. Okay. Mm -hmm. Once they're standing and walking, um, toddlers we're going to treat as children. And we're gonna do the Heimlich maneuver where you come around and um, put a fist in the stomach and your other hand over it for adults and children, okay, for choking. Um, I'll do baby CPR for you because it is a little bit different, okay? Um, on a baby, I'm still gonna say, hey baby, wake up. She doesn't wake up. I think it is way easier to tell if a baby is in prob having problems with breathing than an adult because they breathe about twice as fast as we do. You should be able to look at a baby and tell within five seconds if they're breathing or not because they, they breathe about 20 to 25 times a minute. So she's not breathing and she's purple, okay? I'm not even gonna worry about checking a pulse because finding a pulse on a baby, we're not gonna do on the neck. We, we do it on their arm. But if she's not breathing, she's not moving, I need to start CPR on her. And what's different is I'm only gonna use two fingers to do CPR compressions on a baby, okay? And I just basically wanna go between her nipples on her sternum with two fingers. So I'm gonna go 30 compressions in a row, just like we did on the adult, and I still wanna do them at that fast pace of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. And then after 30 compressions, I'm gonna lift her head, her chin up a little bit, so that we open her airway and I'm gonna cover both her nose and mouth with my mouth and give her two breaths, so breath, breath, and then right back to 30 compressions. I like to leave my non-dominant hand on her forehead. It helps me when I need to give her breaths and also this hand just kinda wants something to do. I've seen people do this before. You're, it's a crisis and we only need two fingers but people tend to wanna put their other hand, no, just two fingers. <laughs> So that's why I suggest putting the hand on the forehead. And we would do that um, and have somebody call for help, okay? So two fingers only for baby compressions. Okay. Questions about saving baby? Yes, Tom. Uh, how many cycles of the patting on the back and then the compressions do you do until it comes out? Until it comes out, but if this becomes protracted, I mean, if, you, if you're doing it five minutes and you don't get that out, it's time to call, have somebody call an ambulance. But, yeah, or until they stop. If they stop making any noise or go limp, then you know it's time to go to CPR, that they haven't had enough air and they've had a respiratory arrest. So, yeah. Usually you can get that out. But you know, children swallow everything from Legos to quarters. <laughs> I get lots of stories about kids um, doing quarters um, and then or candy or something like that so um, any other questions for me yeah you talked about uh, reduced breaths for babies how do you know that you're not putting too much in well you just want to do no matter whether your victim is 
a baby, it could be a newborn, or it's a child, a grade schooler, or an adult. We're giving any victim just enough air to see the chest rise and fall, okay? So a little puff for a baby and a much bigger breath for an adult. And as I said earlier, on all ages, the most important thing is doing those compressions. If you're not comfortable with the breasts or you're worried your breasts aren't going in, that's not our key component. Our key component is pushing on the chest. We want to keep blood flowing. We want to um, get that blood circulating throughout the body. You don't want to a choking situation, if you give a breath, you're getting positive feed or negative feedback of whether you've got a pain airway. Yes. <laughs> so if you're blowing in, you're getting nothing. I mean, it, 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 you've got a blockage. Yeah. Yeah. So that breath is important for a choking thing. Definitely. Okay. If you guys have nothing for me, I will let you get on with your business meeting. Tom, do you mind putting this back up? Okay. And this goes next to it. I will turn my mic off. Did I get everybody with the card? Do you need an extra? Yeah, one more. Suzanne? Yes, sir. 